Hi, my name is Dr. Teresa Sconemilio, and this is Cardic, who is one of our first year residents. And today we'll be going over the grossing of a hemithyroidectomy specimen. So what are the typical um, types of specimens that we would normally get for for, for our service. Okay, so um, thyroidectomy specimens, there's essentially two types of thyroidectomy specimens, right? There's mm -hmm. a total thyroidectomy, right. where you have both lobes, a right and a left, including an isthmus, and then there's also a hemithyroidectomy or a lobectomy, which is the type of specimen that we have here, correct, okay. right? So yep. where you have a lobe and a portion of the isthmus. Okay. So, so how do you tell the orientation of this? So from what I know, um, the stitch that's up here that the surgeon typically leaves for us represents the superior aspect of the pole of the styroid. Um, and then the isthmus, uh, which is basically where the surgeon has cut off the lobe, um, you can actually see the, uh, the margin right here, the incision. Right, because there's this cauterized edge right here. Right. Right, so it's really important, the suture is very important for orientation, okay. and so it's very helpful that the surgeon puts this here so that we know this is the superior lobe, this is the inferior lobe. Right. What's another way that we can tell, say, if this suture wasn't here? Actually, I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay, so the normal shape of a thyroid lobe, in general, the anterior surface is convex, so okay. it has a convex surface, and the posterior surface is concave, so that can help you in orientation. However, if you, you're having trouble, since sometimes the specimen can be, because of the pathology that's inside the, the lobe, it can be distorted, it's always very important to communicate with the surgeon. Okay. So you can always have the surgeon come in and orient it for you. But here we have the suture, so we can tell this is the superior lobe. Right. We can see this is the, the convex surface, mm -hmm. and then we can see this is concave, and you can actually see the cauterized edge right. of the specimen. So what else should we know about uh, these thyroid specimens before we start grossing. Right, that's excellent because before you ever start grossing a thyroid specimen, whether it's a lobectomy or hemithyroidectomy like this or a total thyroidectomy, you want to know what the preoperative findings were. Right. In general, uh, almost every thyroid has been FNA'd before it's been removed. Okay. Right? Um, so there's usually a final aspiration, and so you'd like to know especially if there are multiple nodules, which nodules have been FNA'd, so you want to direct your you're grossing towards those specific nodules. Okay. Okay. So after we have correct orientation of the specimen, what else do you want to do? So the next thing we should do is measure the specimen. And typically you're going to do three dimensions from what I know. Um, you measure the long axis, which is 5.5. You measure the, the width of the specimen, and that's 3.0. And then you want to measure the height of the specimen, and that, that is 2.1. Okay, so you've measured the, the dimensions of the lobe. Right. What other part of the specimen right. do we have? So the other part you have to always keep in mind is um, the cauterized isthmus margin. Right, so you so want to go ahead and measure that as well. Take the so, measurements of the isthmus. So the isthmus is um, 2.1 centimeters long, and then it's about 0 0.4 centimeters wide. And so the amount of isthmus may vary on a hemithyroidectomy specimen, it may be a small portion of it or a much larger portion. Okay. Okay. So we've gone over grossing now, uh, we've gone over orientation of the specimen and taking measurements right. is also one thing we didn't do yet and is weigh the specimen. So it's always okay. very important to weigh the specimen. Okay. Okay. So we would take a weight. Okay. And so once we take the weight, then the next step is to go ahead and start inking it. Right, so before we ink it, we want to examine the surface right. of the gland, okay? So you want to examine the surface for any kind of abnormalities okay. or any kind of attached soft tissue. Sometimes there'll be skeletal muscle or there'll be uh, fat attached at the, near the isthmus, which may contain lymph nodes. Okay. So you want to look for any of that before you go ahead and ink it. So nodules are relatively common in thyroid. Um, most of them are benign, okay. but some of them get large and cause compressive symptoms, or some of them are cancer and so have to be removed. Um, that makes sense. And if there are fine needle aspiration findings that are indeterminate, um, they also usually will be removed, in which case, this, in this particular case, you do a, what's called a diagno diagnostic lobectomy or hemithyroidectomy. Okay. Okay, so now we've gone over orientation. Um, and we've also gone over examination of the external surface and taken all our dimensions and our weight. Right. So then the next we step move on. to inking? Right. So we okay. ink the specimen. Okay. okay. So we'll go ahead and ink the lobe. 
all right? So I'm basically gonna be inking the capsule um, black and then the isthmus um, yellow when I, when I get to it. Correct. And then we ink the isthmus yellow. All right, so now that I've finished the inking, what should I do next, Teresa? Okay, so what do you want to know about the size, potential size of the nodule in the lobe? Right, so I guess um, I guess I want to know, well, where it is. And where I also, it is. And I also need to know what the size what is, the as, size, you, as right. you mentioned, and then what has been done to it before. Right. So size is going to be an important factor in determining how we go ahead and gross this specimen. Okay. Right? So do you know anything about... Yeah, so when I looked at the history for this patient, um, so the patient has a 2.3 centimeter lower pole nodule uh, on the left thyroid, so that's the info that I Okay, so that there's a single solitary nodule single in solitary the right nodule. lower pole, in the right. left lower pole, sorry. Okay, so it's greater than two centimeters. In general, when we have a nodule that's greater than two centimeters, we like to go ahead and cut the lobe coronally. Okay. So we do coronal sections. If it's less than two centimeters, then we go ahead and we do transverse sections. Okay. So in this case, because this is 2.3, we would want to go do ahead and do coronal. coronal and section. do you know why we do that? Actually, I'm not familiar with that. So in general, when the larger a nodule gets, the more likely it's going to cause there's bulging of the nodule. Okay. And so, uh, especially if it's a single solitary lesion that's potentially encapsulated, um, you cut it coronally, you'll get less bulging. You'll be able to see the capsule, visualize the capsule better. Okay. When it's less than two centimeters, that's less of a complication, and so we can go ahead and do transverse sections. But since it's greater than two centimeters, then we'll go ahead and we'll do a coronal section. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so now that we've cut the specimen, we can visualize the nodule. So you can see here, here's the normal background thyroid. Okay. But you can see here, so there's a single solitary nodule right here okay. in the inferior lobe. Yeah, I see that. And if you look closely, it, it looks very well circumscribed, but not encapsulated. So what are some of the things you're going to want to do once you've made right. your initial cut? So once you've made the initial cut, you want to, as you already started, you start looking at the surrounding um, parenchyma. Uh, and you described it, uh, even though it's fixed, it looks relatively normal, uh, it's beefy red. Um, then the next thing is to actually look at the lesion and to A, measure the lesion and also to describe what the lesion looks like. So I'll just measure the lesion first. Correct. So the lesion measures 2.1 in the long axis, 1.3 in the short axis, and then I, I can, I'm going to try to approximate what the you height can is. Approximate. Yeah. So. The height is a, about 0.7. So the largest dimension is 2. Point the, the largest dimension in this case is 2.1, 2. 2. 1, 1. which is still above which 2. Which correlates pretty well to what they right with what they saw on the ultrasound. On ultrasound right. 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 And then the next thing is you want to describe what the lesion looks like. So you mentioned it's well circumscribed, which it is because you can see that it has a really nice border around it, uh, but it's not encapsulated. Because, uh, like you said, it would be very obvious if there was a fi if there was a fibrous capsule, for example. Um, I mean, to me, the lesion looks uh, pretty homogeneous. Um, it has sort of a brown tan appearance to it, um, and I think I think that's all, that's what I can tell at this point. I right. So there's there, that's exactly what you need to do is you need to identify the nodule, right? Describe the characteristics its gross characteristics. So it's a single solitary nodule. It's well circumscribed. It's homogeneous, right? It is an excellent description. Uh, it does not have any, at least grossly malignant features. So it's not invasive looking. And it also, it does not have necrosis uh, or hemorrhage associated with it. Okay. Okay. So we've now cut the specimen coronally. We've identified the lesion, right? We've described, described it. Now, what's, what do you want to do next? Well, I guess the next thing is to figure out what sections What sections are, we do you want need. to take, right? Right. So for a single, solitary, non-encapsulated lesion that you have in the thyroid, how many sections do you want to take? Well, so 
typically, um, it depends again on the size of the lesion okay. um, and also whether it's encapsulated or not. Okay. Um, so in terms of the encapsulation, so if there was a fibrous capsule that we could see, then you would want to submit the capsule in its entirety. Correct. So you want to submit it, in, if it's an encapsulated lesion, you want to submit it entirely, right? Because encapsulated lesions, often the only way to tell really the difference between benign and malignant would be just look at the capsule. To look at invasion, invasion, capsular invasion or vascular invasion, which you can't obviously see grossly, so you'd have to completely submit the entire periphery of the nodule, the capsule with the intervening normal parenchyma, correct? Okay. Correct. Okay. Right. Otherwise, it's generally a centimeter, a section per centimeter of okay. the nodule. But when we have nodules that are two centimeters or less, we generally just submit the entire nodule. Okay. Okay. Also, you know, if it's larger, it, we, sometimes we tend to have larger nodules, like four or five centimeters. Okay. Um, you can representatively submit them. Um, it also depends on also what the preoperative findings were. Right. right. So if, say, if this was suspicious for a malignancy preoperatively, we'd like to sample more of, more it. of it or Makes submit sense. the entire thing. Or, you know, if it was a follicular lesion with atypia, those are the kind of things where we'd probably sample more than okay. less. And do we ever get concerned about margins at any point? Right, so margin is important. So you'd want to take sections that include the lesion to the capsular surface okay. and also the lesion to the isthmus margin. Okay. Okay. In addition to the representative sections that we would submit? Of the... Of the, uh, the lesion. The lesion, right. Okay. So you submit the sections of the lesion with all of those adjacent margins, and then you would submit additionally sections of the surrounding thyroid, the normal okay. thyroid parenchyma. Usually, in general, it's only two to three sections of the remaining normal parenchyma. Okay, that makes sense to me. Okay, so we've cut this coronally now. We've talked about the sections that we're gonna submit, but have we completely sectioned this specimen yet? No, we're gonna have to make additional right. transverse cuts. Correct, so once you do a coronal section, then you wanna do transverse sections of each half of the lobe that you've okay. cut. And what is, when I do the transverse sections, uh, how thick should the sections be? So it should be two to three millimeters in thickness okay. because you don't want to miss any additional lesions that you may have. Okay. And so that's a nice thickness. Okay. So I'll go ahead and start um, doing the sections on each one. Okay. So now that you've cut that lobe transversely, just want to lay out the sections. Okay. So, so I lay it out from superior to inferior. Is that keep the orientation just so we can take a look at each section and make sure that there's no additional lesions in addition to the inferior lobe nodule. Okay, makes sense. Okay. So it looks like I don't see any other obvious lesions. Right, so we just have this, this lesion here Yeah. and still looks like it's pretty well defined once we've cut through here. Right? Okay. And in the adjacent tissue, it looks like there are no additional lesions. Correct. Right? So we'll just go ahead and cut the other okay. half transversely. So I'll just put this aside. And then... Right, so we're looking at the lesion again. Yep. So this is the other half again. Correct. You look at it, it has again a pretty well-defined border. Yeah, and I don't see any other... And there doesn't seem to be any other lesions, lesions in the remaining thyroid. And do you comment on um, how close the lesion is to this particular margin, to the ink capsule when you, after you section through the whole thing? Right. So you comment on whether you think it's invasive or not in its distance to the capsule and the distance to the isthmus margin. Okay. Which it does not seem to be grossly involving anyway. Right. Right. So now that we've transversely sectioned each half, we're going to go ahead and put our sections in the cassette. So so what do we, not, when we normally put tissue in a cassette, what should we think about? Right, so you should think about the size of the tissue you're putting in the cassette, okay. right? Because you don't want to put too much tissue in the cassette and overstuff it. So for instance, just for an example, you don't want to try and squeeze three pieces of tissue like this into a cassette. Makes sense. This is too much. The tissue should not be touching the sides of the cassette. So in general, it's usually two pieces to a cassette. Okay and they fit nicely and it allows the specimen to be processed properly. So what we like to do is go ahead and we'll put the lesion in first in our cassettes. Okay. So now that we've put the lesion in the cassette, what we want to do now is put representative sections from the remaining unremarkable thyroid parenchyma. Okay. Or, or if there are lesions, additional lesions, we would put those in also. But okay. since there doesn't seem to be um, anything else, we'll put just re two representative sections. Okay. Does that seem 
good now? That's perfect. So now we close the cassettes. Okay. And we're done. Okay, so let's go over what we've discussed today. We essentially started off with a hemithyroidectomy specimen. Right. We went over how to orient it. And if we weren't sure of orientation, what we do in that case and the importance of communication with the surgeon. Um, from there, we went over inking the specimen and uh, proper sectioning and whether the nodule is larger than two centimeters or greater, I mean, or less than two centimeters. Right. Will depend on how we go ahead and gross the specimen. Um, once we've cut it, then we went over what sections we should take. So now that we have the sections and cassettes, the cassettes will go to processing. And once that's done, we'll get the slides and we'll be able to review the pathology. Okay. So we've gone over a lot of things today. Do you have any additional questions, Kardik? No, I think you answered all of my questions. Okay, great. Well, that concludes our instructional video on the grossing of a hemithyroidectomy specimen. We hope you found this very informative, and thank you for joining us.